Technology is moving fast. Prodyogiki tezi se aage bad rahi hai aur the technology entwickelt sich schnell und das gilt auch. And because of this, so many new jobs are opening up within the tech industry that might have not existed five years ago, ten years ago, and are opening up new possibilities for you today. There is still this really strange stigma around getting into tech, or even if you are in tech, that you need to have this understanding or experience with coding. There are so many roles, so many high paying roles within the tech industry that you do not need to have coding experience to land. And without these roles, I mean, the industry itself would not survive. We need so many different types of roles, both technical and non-technical. And in this video, I'm going to dive into the top 10 highest paying jobs that do not require coding. Well, I mean, coding experience never hurts anyone, but they do not require it. All right, let's get into it. Coming in at number one is security analyst. And listen, number one was hard for me because it can really vary job to job or role to role based on where you work and how many years of experience you have. I put this as number one though, as in today's environment and world, we see cybersecurity continuing to become more and more important with all the attacks and uh, different events going on that any role really within security will continue to really grow in demand. Now, security analyst is one that could go two ways. You might have to have the technical coding requirements, but other jobs uh, that are hiring for this or companies that are hiring for this won't require it. It's one of those things where you'll definitely get the best or the option anyways. And what does a security analyst typically do? They're responsible for simulating cyber attacks to expose weaknesses on or in IT infrastructures before hackers can exploit them. So you can see why this is such a critical role for companies to be hiring for. They want to know where their vulnerabilities lie so they can build better systems. Now on Levels FYI for total comp, it says the medium comp is 132,000, but if you scroll down, you will see top paying companies from Facebook at 300,000, Amazon at 270,000. So the job does pay really well depending on where you work and years experience. I feel like I said for every role, I gotta stop, but we're at number one. <laughs> Coming in at number two is technical sales engineer. This is for anyone watching this who is a bit more, uh, wants to be more client facing, maybe more outgoing, and wants to get into that sales role, which can make you a lot of money. So what exactly does a technical sales engineer do? They play a key role in selling complex technological, technological products and services to businesses and organizations. They really lean on their knowledge in this technology that they are selling, whether it be a product or service, and their expertise to do demos, talk about any or answer any questions that potential customers or current clients have. And they're experts in not only this product, but experts in selling. All right, let's see, what is, it's gonna be hard for, to understand what a technical sales engineer makes because a lot of times they do work off of commission, which can really help or vary the role or salary, but let's see what it says. All right, sales engineer here for Equinox, Equinix, Equinox is around 120 to 180,000. Now, once again, this role will probably make more than that because of bonuses and different payout structures. Coming in at number three is IT manager. And anything with the manager title, you know you're gonna be getting paid pretty well or actually really well. IT manager though, manages and leads the technology strategy of organizations by evaluating IT systems, finding technology solutions, and managing the entire IT staff. So they have a lot on their plate. Yes, they pay really well, but it's for a good reason. You have a ton of responsibilities and a ton of different hats to wear. Now, similar to other roles I've mentioned, or some of them anyway, Ways. This isn't a role that right out of school, you can just be, be like, put the hat on, be like, I am a manager today. It definitely is something to work towards and is also another great role that if you either had coding experience or even if you didn't, this is still an opportunity or a role that you can get into. Now, the title for this role kind of varies. So when I'm on Levels FYI, what I did was search by senior, sorry, I searched by IT manager and here's what came up. The first one that came up was a senior manager IT operations, so IT manager. And the salary or total comp for that is between 170 and 218,000. So you are very well compensated. There are a ton of different responsibilities though from managing and developing a combination of managers, owning the relationship with different operations teams, helping create the strategy, roadmap and quarterly goals, create and update policies and standards, procedures. The list goes on as you can see on screen here. So it definitely is, yes, it's a lot of money, but you also have to remember you are 
you have a lot of pressure. Coming in at number four is Developer Advocate. And this one is pretty close to my heart because I actually went from doing software development for five plus years into, grew into a developer advocate role. And the reason for this was exactly why I'm making this video. I wanted to find a role that I could grow from, from doing coding full time to not doing coding full time. Now let's do a little FYI here. Developer advocacy is a tricky one to include in this list because for many companies, it does include coding. It can be both. It can be 50% coding and 50% a mix of public speaking, a mix of writing how-to tutorials, working on documentation. The role in itself can really vary company to company. So just a little side note, many developer advocates still code actively, but then there's many who don't. The role can really vary. It is a great way though, if you are someone who comes from a technical background that you can grow into more so teaching about coding or whatever product you have you're working on, or as well, um, getting to do more of that content creation side of thing. I've seen and I've worked with developer advocates before who don't come from a coding background and are very successful. The reason being, it really depends on the product you are working on. If it's not a product that is very coding heavy to implement, then you can be a very successful developer advocate without coding experience. So it's a very interesting role to include in here, but I wanted to include it because I mean, I am a developer advocate during my nine to five and also too, it's a very in demand role that is very high paying right now. And honestly, it's a lot of fun. All right, let's go on levels FYI. Let's see what is going on in the world of developer advocacy for salaries. Kind of a newer role. I mean, it's been around for a while, but people are just starting to really dive into it. So I wonder if it will be on here. Developer advocate. Okay. All right. Oh, takes me to software engineering. Let's see under jobs. So we have uh, Intuit, for example. They are hiring for two developer advocates. One is a group product manager and group manager developer advocacy. So their salary is going around 200 to 280 US and then the other one is 130 to 177 US. So this role does pay really well. It's a lot of fun if you ask me and uh, something that doesn't necessarily require coding or a ton of it. Coming in at number five is Solutions Architect. And this role is interesting. I wasn't sure if I wanted to include it or not. Not because it's not a great role, because it really is a good role. I, I think it, it used to be one of my dream careers actually. Uh, but why I was hesitant to include it was because the coding level of solutions architects can vary company to company. And I guess this really can go for many of the jobs we are speaking about, but with solutions architect, some of your main responsibilities include designing and planning the overall architecture of IT systems and infrastructure. So you are in charge of overseeing technical designs and ensuring the solutions meet business requirements. So a lot of times a business will come to a company where there is solutions architects and say, this is the system we're looking to implement, or maybe it's the, your, your company's system. Solutions architects will then take this and find the best way to implement it to this company based on their system requirements. So they are very technical, but it depends on what company or product that they are working with, depending on if they are coding or not. I've met solutions architects who code 50% of the time still. And then I've met some who do not even touch code, but maybe they coded in a previous life, if you will. They know they have a strong understanding of code and they aren't doing it anymore, but they know how to code. All right, on levels FYI here for Solutions Architect, we have Amazon Solution Architect salaries. Let's go by level here. So we wanna start at level four, L4. We are looking at a total of 151,000. Going up to level five or level seven. Level five is 287 for total comp and then level seven is 391,000. So this is a really great career and it's not something that you typically see people just starting their career as, but it's more so something to work towards, especially if you are someone who codes right now and maybe doesn't want to code forever. Coming in at number six is a job that I thought was really interesting and I haven't worked with anyone who does this job, which is business systems analyst. So this would be typically a role that is for larger companies, but not necessarily. So what do they do? 
BSAs study an organization's current systems and procedures, see how things are currently working, how the flows are currently working, and also to their current design solutions. After they study this, they will then take this information and find different ways to help businesses operate more efficiently. So this role requires analyzing systems, collaborating with different departments, and also creating support documentation. So this role is something that businesses will bring in when they are really at large scale and they're facing a lot of bottlenecks or their project is and finding different ways to really speed things up or work more efficiently. Now, when I was looking up uh, salaries for business systems analyst, I found a role uh, here, which was hiring for 80,000 to 170,000. So a huge gap in uh, what they are paying. And that's really because of the amount of experience you're bringing to the table. But for this, if we scroll down, we can see here, what will you do? Play a critical role bridge between revenue stakeholders and revenue systems teams to support efficiency and scalable solutions. So you are basically at the end of the day, finding better ways to support and find scalable solutions. Now for this role in particular, it is a requirement of three years in a similar role. So it's not even though you have to have 10 years to get into this job, this is something that you can start working towards now. Coming in at number seven is project manager. And if you are a developer out there who is just looking to grow your career into a different role, you might be like, oh, project manager. So often there's a lot of friction between the two, the project manager and the developer or technical team. Before I get there though and explain why, let's talk a little bit about what exactly is a project manager. Project managers plan and oversee projects to ensure they are completed on time and ideally within budget. So they are responsible for coordinating teams, resources, schedules, and also to budgets, as I mentioned. Now going back to why sometimes there is friction between the project managers and also to the developers, well, more so it's with product managers, but depending on the size of the company, they might be dealing directly with the project manager. And this is because project managers have one goal, which is to stick to the timeline, stick to the deadlines, make the client happy. Developers, you know, sometimes we uh, tend to work on our own schedules and a lot of times things come up and uh, whether it be a new bug or something that's a bit more difficult to implement which causes some friction between the timelines but it's still a very interesting job project managers are someone that really need to be organized very uh, stick to schedule are hyper focused it's something that I would be terrible at doing to be honest but I have a lot of respect for project managers. All right, according to Glassdoor, project managers make on average $96,000. Once again, I feel like this is on the low end. I'm going on a lot of the low end side of things, uh, which I think there's a lot of opportunity though for, yeah, I can see here, project manager at Wish is 199,000. All right somewhere in the middle. Definitely you can make uh, six figures being a project manager, starting out maybe a bit lower and then working your way up to the top. Coming in at number eight is cloud engineer. And this is something that is continuing to grow in demand. The cloud industry is just, it's an industry that keeps on going up. It's really incredible, but what do they do? Cloud engineers design, implement, manage, and support cloud computing solutions. So they are overseeing migration to the cloud, monitoring the performance, and maybe even are setting up disaster recovery and backup systems. So this is a very important job. And as more companies migrate to the cloud, which sounds funny to say, because if you're a company, you there's, you have to be on the cloud already, right? What's the average salary for this? Let's go to levels FYI and see. All right, so we don't have, on Levels FYI anyways, there isn't a cloud engineer specific one, but let's go to networking because that is kind of encompassing within it. The median total comp is 181,000. So this job pays really well, as you can see, probably should be higher on the list than number eight, but there's a lot of really great ones that aren't just about the salary, but job overall with having to understand code or not having to understand code. So this is a great job for anyone who really wants to break into the cloud. There are so many different certifications now online for really padding up your resume if you are interested in the cloud, that it's a really great industry to get into. Coming in at number nine is business intelligence analyst. I remember actually when I first started, it was my second career, my second career, my second job, which was with IBM. And I was joining as a developer and I remember thinking, what are these, they'd call them back there, they'd call them BAs, business analysts. I'm like, what are, I came from a startup. I don't even know what a BA is. What do these people do all day? They seem to be really important. So now looking back on business intelligent analyst, it makes me think of, of that, but they are very important because business analysts collect, interpret and analyze data to help businesses make better strategic decisions. So in the case of uh, working with business analysts or what they do day to day, 
they are kind of in the middle or the middle person you could say where they are interacting with the client, uh, understanding what their needs are, what their wants are, also conveying different information to them based on what is being built. And then on the other side, they are also working internally. So they might be working with uh, product managers, not directly with developers, but depending on the size of the company, interacting with them to various degrees. Business analysts also are responsible for creating reports, visual, visualizations, and models to provide business insights. So you will see oftentimes business analysts come up not only for internal companies, but also to for consulting companies. So going back to, I was speaking about the IBM side of things, I was on the consulting side at IBM. So the business analysts made a lot of sense right there where they are that kind of intermediary between the clients, and then also to the internal team. I think it, I always thought it was a really interesting job because you get the best of both worlds. You get to speak to new and other people, the clients, on a regular basis, but then you also get to connect with a solid team that you have built internally. According to builtin.com, the average base salary for a business analyst is around, well, total comp is around 92,000. Now, I think that is really on the low end side of things. It's interesting though, when I was doing the search, uh, it does seem to kind of be that sweet spot where business analysts start. Business analysts, you know, start around 70 to 80 and then work their way up. So it is an interesting job though, and there's a lot of potential to get into more leadership or management roles within it. Coming in at number 10 is a skill that I really wish I possessed, but I don't very well. Well, now thanks to AI, maybe I don't have to. I'm just kidding, I still do. Which is technical writer. Technical writer's jobs can really vary from creating how-to guides, documentation, blog posts, there is a lot to encompass within it. And depending on what company they are working for, this role does not mean you have to code. A lot of times you might be showing some code, so you have to have an understanding of it or work closely with the engineers to understand it, but not even that in all cases. Technical writers are for anyone who are really interested in writing, but also to understanding how technology works, not necessarily building the technology. Now, what does this role pay? This varies company to company. It's one of those roles that really varies, I would say. On Levels FYI though, the median salary is, or comp, sorry, is 120,000. Uh, and that's kind of where it leaves at. Here, I can see if it goes down a bit more. Microsoft, Google, they're paying really well for this job. Facebook's paying 170,000. Now, I'd be interested to know what exactly that role really entails because I do think it would be a bit more than technical writing, probably really diving into the documentation side of things. All right, those are the top highest paying jobs in tech that don't require coding. Now I'm sure there are tons from this list that I am missing. I mean, this list could feel endless if you wanted to for the reason of there are so many great roles within the industry that don't require coding or a coding background. Now this may vary company to company as I mentioned, but I thought I was really excited to make this video because there's still this really big stigma that if you learn to code, you need to stay in a technical role your entire career, or if you want to break into tech, you have to learn to code. I love coding. Coding has done wonders for me, but it's not the only way to break into tech and or make a ton of money working in tech. So I wanted to really highlight that and share that throughout this video. All right, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding and career, future tech, all that good stuff related topics. Leave in the comments any questions you have. I will do my best to answer every single one of them. You can hold me to that and I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.